Uh, well, currently I am uh, at home and um, helping with my family a lot. I'm not in school. Um, I graduated high school um, with my uh, associate's degree and I graduated early. So I was able to take a break trying to figure out what I would like to do. Um, I didn't want to rush into anything. Um, so I've just been on a break still though. Uh, and my grandma recently, uh, my dad's mom, she had a stroke. She's a ma major stroke. So uh, she's home now and I've been helping my mom to take care of her. Um, and I help my other grandma and uh, my family is very, uh, we're very family oriented. So we um, always try to help each other. So I'm just currently helping my family right now. I think when I, when people ask about myself, I do have a hard time talking about myself. I feel maybe I don't want to sound too arrogant or, you know, talking about myself well is hard sometimes, but um, I do enjoy uh, helping people and serving and uh, I have you know a heart for people and their needs um, and I love you know meeting new people um, you know I uh, enjoy working hard uh, I have a very large family that was just my parents and my sister but I have uh, three older brothers as well and um, they're all married and I have many nieces and nephews as well so family gatherings and parties are very loud <laughs> but um, no I love my family and um, you know, we're, they're all very hardworking, selfless people. Uh, we love to, you know, be there for one another. If someone has an event, you know, everyone will show up. My, you know, grandparents and my aunts and uncles and cousins. And uh, so we're a very blessed family. I don't have too much information, you know, about my birth mother. Um, I, you know, I don't know if she was, you know, I know that she was young. Um, but I don't know if she was married or, you know, what her situation was. Um, but I, I always know that I'll have so much respect for her uh, and just uh, gratefulness um, for doing, you know, one of the hardest things a mother could do and, you know, give up uh, a child, you know, that she knew that she could not provide for. You know, she allowed me a life that she could not give me. Um, so I'll always be grateful for that. And uh, I was, you know, put in, up for adoption and I was with a foster family, a widow, and uh, she had two grown children living with her. So I was well taken care of. Um, and my parents, you know, they have always wanted to adopt. Um, and so when they began the adoption journey, they, uh, you know, were with an agency uh, and they were looking, um, you know, online. And the way that it worked was that, you know, if you wanted a girl, then you would um, be in line waiting for a girl. You couldn't, you know, choose uh, what, you know, girl you wanted or, you know, what you got was the child you would have. And um, so they, my father saw me one day online and um, there was no more really information about whether I had been adopted or what my situation was. So they had contacted the agency in hopes to get more information. And um, it really is kind of a cool story, my adoption story of how uh, they found out that I had like a heart condition, uh, some health problems. And um, so I was going to be sent to another, to work with another agency um, because there's some more, you know, complications when the child has health problems. Um, so they, my parents, you know, uh, they um, requested to see my health information, you know, my records and everything, and they uh, talked to some doctors here uh, to see if it would be a problem. And, you know, the doctors said that um, it, you know, it could possibly go away, the health problems, and uh, wouldn't be seen as a concern in the later years. Um, and so they decided to adopt me. They said, well, you know, we want her, we, ch we, we want to adopt her into our family. And um, they uh, adopted me and I came to America and um, my heart conditions and they became, they no longer were a problem, they went away. So we always say, you know, that the Lord set me aside for them, uh, you know, specifically for that family. So we have like a photo album of when, you know, they met me at the, at the airport. Um, they said I was very small um, and I cried for the first few days because I had problems, you know, wanting like to eat from a bottle. Uh, they found the right, you know, the right uh, bottle to feed me with and uh, I stopped crying. Um, 
But yeah, I mean, they, they tell me that, you know, ever since I was young, they've told me that I was adopted. Um, and uh, we have been able to also um, adopt my younger sister about two and a half years, or t about two years later um, after I was adopted. They also adopted her from South Korea. So uh, adoption is a very important part of our lives and our family. It was, you know, nice having three older brothers, but also then to have someone near your age as well. Um, you know, we always did everything together, um, played together, you know, and like, I can't imagine my life without her. So yes, it's been a wonderful blessing to be able to have her. So I always grew up knowing I was adopted and I never saw that as something maybe like a, a negative. Um, so I never, I don't remember ever having a moment, you know, maybe where I was different from my parents. It was always just something that we kind of joked about, like, oh, I get my looks from my dad or I get my looks from my mom. But um, there was never, I don't think, a big moment where I was, you know, very shocked or, you know, uh, I think as I got older and I, you know, started to explore the Korean culture more, uh, I noticed maybe more how I looked and how I could look to Korean people and how I, you know, loved their look and I kind of got more into their culture of, you know, how they dress or, you know, how they do their hair or makeup. And um, so that really interested me more, but there was never really a big moment for me. With the Korean culture, my parents, uh, they put my sister and I uh, in a Korean school when we were younger. So we were able to learn more about that culture, try to learn the language, the food, be surrounded by people as well. Um, we went to a church uh, near Chicago um, that hosted a Korean school every uh, weekend. And um, so that was really fun. I, you know, I got to be around kids my age that were also Korean. And I never, I don't think, met anyone that was also an adoptee, just my sister and I that were there. Um, but we were, you know, immersed in the culture and the food and the people and the language. Um, but even since I was, when I was a baby, you know, uh, in Korea, they have the 100 day celebration. And my parents, when I was adopted, they had that for me as well. I had my hanbok, my dress, and, um, you know, they lay out the, the different items that you choose that will tell you uh, what you will do in the future. And they had that party for me. Um, so, I mean, ever since I was young, they've been keeping my culture, you know, in my life. I think just because it's a, an important part of who I am. You know, once I was adopted, it wasn't like they wanted to take away, you know, that I was Korean or anything. It was always very celebrated. You know, my family was also very interested in it as well, and they wanted to learn from it as well. You know, we would watch the movies and they would enjoy the food as well. Um, oh, yes, yes. That's a very big dream of my family and mine as well, that one day we can go back to Korea. I would love to, you know, go maybe even to my hometown where I was born and just, you know, be in the, you know, the culture and the people. I'm trying to learn Korean right now as well. So I would like to be able to speak it maybe more fluently and understand it before we go. But yes, we really would love to go back there. I have thought about that, you know, not maybe often, but when it does come up, I wonder, you know, does she think about me? Does she, you know, is she okay? Is she in a Korea still? Uh, do I have maybe siblings or, um, or could she be in the U.S.? Um, meeting her, I'm still unsure about, you know? I mean, as I said, I have so much respect for her. Um, but I can't imagine any other family than the one I have now. And I feel like maybe at this time, at least in where I'm at in my life, I'm happy with my family. Um, I wouldn't be a bad thing to meet her, I don't think. I would hope that she would want to meet me. You know, I can never imagine what it would go like, but um, yeah, I think, I think right now, I think I just, I'm okay where I am and, you know, I just, I pray for her, you know, from time to time, hoping that she's okay. Uh, maybe even that she came to find the Lord. That would be even more wonderful, but yeah. I mean, when I think of her, I do feel maybe, uh, not, not pity, but just maybe what she was going through at that time, you know, for her to give up her child. Um, but no resentment, just grateful, you know, very grateful 
for the life that she's allowed me to have now. I have a wonderful life, a very rich, blessed life. So um, absolutely no resentment. Uh, I have imagined it, you know, a lot, what it would be like. I think I always picture it very emotional. Um, just very thankful for, you know, meeting her, and that would be that would be a wonderful opportunity because I know many people aren't able to. Um, but I have, you know, imagined it a lot. What it would be like if I would look like her, um, you know, what she would be like, uh, you know, just the whole interaction. But yes, I have. I think that all depends on, uh, you know, maybe if she would want to, or maybe where I'm at in my life. I don't see anything wrong, um, but I think it also uh, depends on, um, like, where, you know, I mean, I can't, re I, she is my birth mom, um, but I have my adopted mom. She's, in my mind, my only mother, uh, just because, but also not that no, you know, resentment or hate to my birth mom, but, I mean, my mother that I have now, she's the only one in my life. So it would, it would depend on what she would want the relationship to be like, I think, as well. If it was just to keep in contact, um, to know that we, you know, we can, you know, talk to each other and meet each other and see each other. Um, but maybe if it were something to maybe overstep certain boundaries, I think I would feel a little hesitant um, in that, so. Whenever I think of adoption, I, you know, I think of my, my own story and I think of my sister's story. Um, and we also have other family members that have adopted as well. My own brother, um, my cousins, um, they've adopted. So whenever I think of adoption, I think of it as a blessing. Uh, I, um, I'm very grateful for it. And, and in my own life as well, uh, I, um, I was adopted. I was chosen, you know, as a child. My parents saw me and they wanted to, me. They wanted me as part of their family. And... Um, that's my earthly family, but for my spiritual family, uh, God did the same for me. He adopted me into his family. He longs for a relationship with me. Uh, he chose me. He loves me. And um, I am part of his family. And so I think when I think of adoption, I think of my earthly family, but also what Jesus did on the cross for me and how he died for me and paid for my sins. And he um, adopted me into his family. So it's a bigger picture in my mind. Um, but I see it as a blessing, um, something that forever will change my life. If I wasn't adopted, I could not, you know, imagine or picture where I would be today, um, what my life would be like. Um, so I'm very blessed. Yes, oh my goodness, I, all the time, I dream of having, you know, many children that are my own, but also adopted as well. Um, I, I can't wait to adopt many children, yes, from all over, from Korea, you know, young, old, I'm, I'm, I'm looking forward to that. I dream of that all the time. Well, currently, I'm every weekend I help. I work with a Korean school actually as well, um, and you know uh, I'm able to help my family and help other people. Um, being on this break has allowed me that. Whenever I think about something I want to do in the future, I always want to serve. I want to help other people, be available, and um, you know just be a blessing to other people. Uh, be able to help them in, you know, a great time of need um, or even in small times of need. Um, it's hard to, you know, that can be a lot of areas of life or any kind of career of helping people. Um, but, you know, God has given me a lot of opportunities to serve and to, uh, you know, um, be a blessing to others. So I don't have a very specific area yet. I'm still praying about that and, you know, looking for that. But just being available, I think, is very helpful as well because, you know, there's always need. There's always help, you know, people that need help as well. So.